Tonight's top EU stories from the unit website include EU antitrust authority probes Peugeot over state aid, police block far-right Greeks only food handout in Athens, EU regulators to review EDF tax aid again after court ruling, UK government broke EU air quality law Supreme Court says, plus Merkel warns Eurozone that the EU has the last word on national budgets. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the unit nightly news. First, from our homepage, Euro Bureau Klepto Racketeers began an in-depth investigation into whether the French government is unfairly helping automaker Peugeot Citroën under state aid directive regulation. There are good and bad points to this dictatorial interference from the EU. The good point should be that it is intended to stop governments using taxpayers' money to provide support for private corporations. On the face of it, a seemingly good idea. But, and it's a big but, this does nothing to stop or avert the control that is exercised by global multinational corporations that can manipulate at a global level, and in fact encourages the further development of the global multinationals in a bid to circumvent state aid directives. The bad point is where you have privatised state institutions, essentially a public asset fire sale, see post office, British gas, rail track, etc. This liquidates the public balance sheet, i.e. public wealth, and transforms it into disposable cash, most frequently spent to prop up further irresponsible public spending by the government, see New Labour for an example. Or worse still, in the case of the Royal Bank of Scotland, where the public purse is used to fund an enormous purchase of shares at above market value, which the government is then forced to sell for pennies on the pound under the EU state aid directive, in which case we, the public, all just get ripped off. Greece's anti-immigrant Golden Dawn party scuffled with police who stopped them distributing food exclusively to Greeks in Athens' central square. Television footage showed Golden Dawn members in their trademark black t-shirts hitting riot police on the head with rolled up Greek flags after being prevented from unloading eggs, bread and lamb to hand out in Syntagma Square. Well, first off, we're very clear here at the unit, under no circumstances do we agree with violent or confrontational behaviour, and that goes for both the police state officials and protesters. But this is an outrageous act by the state, and should in no way be tolerated. This food that this group brought to the square was theirs to give to whom they like, when they like, and whilst non-Greeks might have been deliberately left out, their condition has not been worsened than if the group had simply not appeared at all. There is something much more sinister at work here. You have to ask the question, why so much immigration? Why is the EU encouraging and promoting the forced integration of communities? It's almost as though there is a deliberate effort to create fear, unrest and discrimination. What do you think? Email us or comment and let us know. The European Commission has said it is reopening an investigation into a tax break granted to French power utility EDF after the highest EU court overturned a Commission finding that the measure was illegal state aid. The Commission said in a statement it was extending the inquiry to take into account whether a private investor would have made an investment like that of the French authorities. Having discovered new information recently from a source which we cannot yet disclose, we at the unit are now taking an in-depth review of the privatisation of the UK energy industry. More on this interesting investigation in the future. British judges ruled on Wednesday that the UK government has breached European Union air quality law and asked the European Court of Justice for guidance on what action needs to be taken, delaying immediate improvements to air pollution. I love it when these stories come up. I was out at a public speaking event recently giving our presentation 1972 et al to a group of business owners and explaining the extent to which sovereignty and parliamentary powers have been transferred to Brussels. 
As is normal at the end of my 20 minutes, there was a resounding, stunned silence in the room as the folks stared with gaping mouths at what I had just explained to them. Now, when we report on stories like this, they are a great example of how the UK has silently become completely subservient to the EU. Note in the opening paragraph, British judges asked the European judges for guidance on matters of law. A straightforward admission that EU law is supreme to British law, just as was disclosed in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048. Countries in the single currency were warned last night they must accept the EU has the last word on control of national budgets. German Chancellor Angela Merkel, the continent's most powerful leader, insisted countries would be forced to cede more sovereignty to rescue the troubled euro. Well, first of all, thank heavens the UK is not in the single currency. But beyond that, let's look a little deeper. Let's take Italy, for example. Until very recently, the country and its people did not have control of their own lands, economies or communities. Their parliament was superseded with technocrats, i.e. Mario Monti, the EU appointee. And that is a critically important statement. EU appointee. That means not democratically elected. And as for Mr Monti, what's his background? Monti is a leading member of the exclusive Bilderberg Group. He has also been an international advisor to Goldman Sachs and Coca-Cola. He has also been a member of the Senior European Advisory Council at Moody's, the International Credit Ratings Agency. And he is one of the members of the Business and Economics Advisors Group of the Atlantic Council. So it's clear to see this is not a man of the people, for the people. The tales of where are similar in Cyprus, Greece, Portugal, need I go on. The countries had their rights and their sovereignty stolen from them, not by an invading army, but by money changers, kleptocrats and legal malevolence. <laughs> oh, how the pen is so much mightier than the sword. Today in our video library, as you know, we have written and produced a new documentary, Betrayed, which we have submitted to the Operation Paul Revere contest at Infowars.com. We thought it would be interesting to take a look at some of the other videos that have been produced and so through the month of May I will pick out a daily Operation Paul Revere contest entry and provide a link to it on YouTube. Now speaking of YouTube, you could really help us a great deal with our documentary and our contest entry by subscribing to our channel, rating our film Betrayed, either like or dislike but I'd prefer like, please, and most importantly, sharing it with as many people as you possibly can. So, without further ado, today's video, which I have added to our Operation Paul Revere YouTube playlist, Where Are They Leading Us? by Bally Watson. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the e Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the words section of our website. Join us in our live question time style online show, The Unit Interactive. Broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below.